Hi friends, I'm Gio, and welcome back to my channel. This story is called, You Are Forever My Heart. Let's begin. I stared at the text from Shad one last time. April 14th, Saturday night, 8 p.m., Club Diggory. I've reserved seats in the back. Since I can't be there, hang out with our friends, and I'll call about eight, and we can chat. It's our anniversary. That night, Leapfrog was playing a live concert. Leapfrog was a local Nevadan band, often playing in Vegas and Reno and Eli and a lot of other cities. April 14th, tonight, was a special night. It was the one-year anniversary of Shad and mine's last date before he was called overseas. He's a lieutenant in the Navy and served on a carrier. Though we've spoken many times, I haven't seen him since, except by vidchat. I miss him. My parents immigrated to the U.S. and became citizens 23 years ago, one year before I was born. I'm Giuseppe Vitale, Zeppe or Zepp to my friends. My family came from an ancient hill town called Brisagella in Ravenna, which is in northeastern Italy, home of narrow streets, beautiful wines, and the best food I've ever tasted. A couple of years ago, me and my cousins hiked through the hills to the nearby clock tower and had lunch while we waited for the clock tower bell to ring. Someday I want to take Shad to Ravenna to meet my nona and nonato and my three aunts and five uncles and 23 cousins and an army of nieces and nephews. I still don't know all their names. Leapfrog played country music, and I'm not sure I liked it, but Shad does. That's the important part. The concert was in a place called Club Diggory in Las Vegas. Celebrating anything wasn't fun with Shad gone, but he and my friends insisted. Zep, we have to celebrate our anniversary. I've invited our friends, and my favorite band is playing. We can still party even though I'm on the other side of the world. We can have a beer together, toast the good times, listen to good music, laugh. You order pizza in Vegas, I'll order pizza here. It will be our first date in a year, he had said. How many time zones are we apart? I asked. At least ten, maybe more, he had said. Won't your captain get mad when you have a beer for breakfast? I teased. No, it will be apple juice, but don't tell our friends. It's our little secret, Shad had teased back. I missed him so much it ached. 7.30 p.m. Walking inside the club, I pushed my way through a lot of people. Leapfrog was good because this place was packed. Dark paneled walls, red curtains surrounded a small stage, and the big room was divided into three tiers, with the bar at the back. The lighting was dim, the ceiling was painted black, and the floor was dark gray concrete. Shad had said he had reserved seats on the third tier. Each tier had multiple round tables and booths, and each table had a small candle in the middle, used for both ambient lighting and for warming the pizzas. Cozy, old-fashioned mood lights hung from the ceiling above each booth. Leapfrog played some song I recognized, because Shad used to play it all the time. I missed him with every breath I took. I'd have to settle for a vid chat reunion, even though I wanted to hold him. A crowd of people surged past me, and I stepped to the side, both to let them pass and to find my friends. I didn't see my friends anywhere on the third tier, or anybody I recognized. Or on the second tier. Every table was full. Did I have the night wrong? His April 14th would be a day later than mine. What if it was supposed to be tomorrow? I reread the text. No, tonight was the 14th, our special night. Yet, where were all our friends? With the band playing as loud as they could, I couldn't call my friends, but maybe a text would get to them. I sent, I'm here, but I can't find you. Leapfrog finished their song and began playing another song. It was too loud to even hear my phone beep for an incoming text, but my friends never sent one. Great. I must have missed them when I looked earlier. 
I wish Shad was here. I wandered to the third tier and checked every table. My friends weren't at any of them. I wandered the second tier and had the same result. Where were they? I glanced through the first tier. Wandering through them would be bad form because I'd be blocking the stage, but I didn't see any of my friends. One table, off to the left side, was empty. It had a reserved for the band sign on it, but nobody was there. Of course not. They were on the stage. If my friends were here, I couldn't find them. I sent another text. I'm at the bar. Come find me because I can't find you. The music was just as loud back at the bar. I took a seat, ordered a rum and cola, and adjusted my bar stool so I could survey the crowd. Still no sign of them. 7.45. Shad would call in 15 minutes. The song stopped, and there was some clapping. The guy on the guitar held the mic and adjusted his cowboy hat. I'm Tommy, and we're Leapfrog. Give us 15 friends to wet our whistles, then we'll be back on the stage. The club played some random light jazz over the speakers, and a lot of people got up to take a break. 7.50. I had almost finished my drink and was about to order another when Tommy, the guitarist from the band, walked over to me. He took a seat next to me and told the bartender, I'll have what Zeppe's having and get him a second one. Put it on the band's tab. Oh, great. The guy from the band is hitting on me? How did he know my name? Look, I said, holding my hand up to stop the bartender. No, thanks. I appreciate the offer, but I'm in a committed relationship. Tommy gave me a smile. So am I. See that sexy guy on stage? That's my fiancé, Eddie. Zeppe, we need to talk business, and we have to make it fast, because I only have five minutes before I have to be back on stage. Consider the drink payment for your help. I hear you can read and write Italian fluently. Yes, I can. Where did you hear that from? I asked. I'll explain when we have time. Could you translate this right now? It's important. It's from Robert, Sammy's significant other, and he's in Italy on business. Sammy's our lead singer and plays keyboards. She's the woman to the left of the stage, wearing the pink top, and she doesn't speak Italian. None of us do, he said, pulled out a folded piece of paper and handed it to me. If this guy was trying to pick me up, at least he had an original way to do it. I shrugged. The bartender set our drinks by us, and I took a sip before reading the paper. It was in neat, precise handwriting and in perfect Italian. Something about the penmanship suggested a firm, strong hand, not the elegance of a soft touch. Probably a man's writing. Did he send it in Italian as a joke? I said. I don't think so. I've heard it said that even recipes sound romantic when spoken in Italian, Tommy said. That made me chuckle, and I took a sip of my new rum and cola. At first scan, this was a love letter on high-class stationery with a gold leaf border. The date at the top was April 14th, today. I spoke slowly as I read the paper out loud and roughly translated it. Beloved, I live for every moment I can be with you and long to hold you again. I keep your picture near me at all times to give me strength when times are hard. Those days and nights we spent in Vegas, loving each other, holding each other, and whispering our love, I will treasure forever. When this job is done, I will run to you so we can hold hands and kiss and be one. Your smile is like the dawn, always bringing me light and joy. Until we are together, accept this token of my love, because when I return, I want to make us official. You are the song that makes me live, and I will always love you. You are forever my heart. Wow, it's almost a poem. I think he's proposing. They must love each other a lot, I said, and a pang of something sad flooded through me. I wish Shad were here. What was the token, I said, changing the subject before the emotion made me cry. It came with a gold ring inscribed with their names, and what I think is the Italian word for love. I have the ring on stage. Do you want to see? He said. 
Since I couldn't find my friends, I might as well help this guy. I'd love to see it. If you can leave this paper with me for half an hour, I can give you a better translation. It's the least I can do since you bought me a drink. Taking our drinks with us, we braved the crowds and went to the stage. There were only minutes left before the band started playing again. Eddie moved some equipment to the side. One man tuned a guitar. Another adjusted something on the drums. And the lead singer, Sammy, fiddled with the settings on her keyboard. She smiled at me and said, Thanks for translating this. I honestly don't know why Robert sent it in Italian. Not a problem, I said. The empty table is reserved for the band. Why don't you have a seat while you translate it, Tommy said. Tommy knelt by his guitar case and pulled out an envelope and winced. Carefully, he tilted the envelope, but nothing came out. He looked inside. The oddest expression of horror crossed his face. Order a pizza. It's on us tonight. Are you here alone? Sammy asked. I'm supposed to meet some friends, but I can't find them, I said, as Eddie and Tommy led me to the table. It was 7.55. Shad would be calling any minute. Tonight, you're our guest, Tommy said. Sammy, I've got a problem. I can't find the ring. It must have fallen out in the car. If you don't find it, I'm going to break your guitar over your head and stomp on your cowboy hat, Sammy said. Eddie and Tommy ran outside. There was still no sign of my friends. Proof I had the date wrong. Shad was more than ten time zones away. His April 14th hadn't even happened yet. Trust me to screw up this date. Sammy handed me a pen and a pad of paper, and I began translating her letter. At exactly eight, Tommy and Eddie ran up to the stage. Tommy looked pale, and his mouth had a sour expression. Sammy, I'm sorry. I can't find the ring. It's not in the car, and we looked all over the parking lot. You lost my engagement ring? If you don't find it, I'm tearing your hat into a million pieces, and then I'm starting on your guitar, Sammy yelled, and stormed back to her keyboard. Tommy pulled the strap of his guitar over his head and settled the guitar against his stomach. He took the mic and said, Can we have the house lights, please? This is important. A few seconds later, the room was brightly lit. Tommy continued, Ladies and gentlemen, before we start, please look around your tables. I lost Sammy's engagement ring. She's our lead singer and keyboardist. Anyway, it's a simple gold band, but it has their names written on it. I believe it's in here somewhere. If you see it, give a holler. I'll buy you a drink or a pizza or whatever you want. How about a bottle of champagne? Some guy yelled from the back. The crowd chuckled. The best this place has, it's on me, Tommy said. If the ring doesn't show up, Tommy, I'm going to get so furious at you. I trusted you with it, Sammy yelled. Sorry, Tommy said and turned to the crowd. Help me out, guys. Please find it. Sammy threatened to destroy my hat. Help. Logically, the ring must have slid from the envelope while the band was setting up. Since I couldn't see the ring on stage, it would have rolled off. Since nobody else in the front had seen it, it might have come to my table. I looked about my table, but there was no ring. I crawled under the table. Still no ring. I looked under each chair. Nothing. Somebody must have kicked it which meant it could be anywhere on the first tier. Everybody looked around their tables, and nobody found a ring. The waiters circulated among the tables and aisles and didn't find one either. Poor Sammy. Tommy had lost her engagement ring. This must be a nightmare for her. And for Tommy. I couldn't imagine what they'd be feeling, but it would be pretty bad if we didn't find it. The least I could do for her was to translate the letter. If the ring didn't show up, Tommy could have another one made, but it wouldn't be the same. Sammy must be having the worst night of her life. Tommy was about to lose his guitar and his hat. Please keep looking, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll start singing. The offer stands for the rest of the night. We need to find it, Eddie said. But right now, we'd better start singing. This is a song we've been working on, so it's a little rough, but I hope you'll like it. The drummer tapped his sticks together, and Tommy softly said, A one, and a two, and a three, and a... 
the band began playing a slower song in a minor key, and when the band started singing, it was in perfect four-part harmony. They sang, I live for every moment I can be with you. Wait a second. I looked at the translation I was working on. That was the first line from the letter Sammy received. Some guy clear in the back yelled, I found the ring. You owe me some champagne. That voice sounded familiar. Goosebumps formed all along my arms, and tears warmed my eyes. It can't be. The singing became a low background hum. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our cousin, Sammy said. He's come a long way to be here. A huge cheer exploded. I couldn't hear anything Sammy said. My friends appeared, taking seats at the table around me, grinning, laughing, staring at me. Suddenly, I was afraid to turn around. The sudden pain paralyzed me. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't speak. I couldn't move. Bartender, my cousin needs a bottle of your best champagne and a couple of glasses. Shad and Zed are here to celebrate, Tommy said. Shad? I turned around. A man in navy dress whites walked down the aisle, a familiar jauntiness about his smile. He held a ring between thumb and forefinger and came straight for me. Shad. Something collapsed inside me and I couldn't see. The tears blinded me and I ran fast as I could and held my boyfriend tight. My cheeks burned and Shad wiped the wetness under my eyes. This moment can't be real. Shad can't be here, can he? Shush. It's okay. Tonight I'm here for you, babe, Shad whispered one hand stroking my hair, the other hand holding me close. Ladies and gentlemen, forgive us for being a little dramatic. Shad and Zepp haven't seen each other for a year, and we decided to have a little surprise reunion, Tommy said. The man I loved was here, holding me. I couldn't speak. I could only hold him. It's okay, Zepp, Shad whispered, gently stroking my cheek. I'm here. What did you think of my letter? That was from you? I said. Every word came straight from my heart, but I had a friend help me translate it, Shad whispered. It was beautiful, I said, my voice choking. Shad dropped to one knee, held my left hand, and slid the ring on it. I know I'm gone a lot, but I don't have a choice. I love you, and I want to be with you as much as I can. Giuseppe Vitale, would you marry me? As the joy exploded inside me, I smothered his face with a thousand kisses, and somewhere in there, a simple yes escaped my lips. The end. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. We'll see you next week. And if you get a moment, leave a like or even subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Peace.